Good morning, good morning. It is day 305 of From Here to Jerusalem. Walking from West Cork to Jerusalem with a harp on your back. Marcel is here. I am here. Today still no Shani the harp, no Jerry the stick. We'll start walking again tomorrow. Um, yeah. Last day of Marcel here. So we're going to take it nice, easy, peasy, lemon squeezy. And uh, we're finally going to go and see the Red Cross uh, concentration camp here in Nish. Uh, he said to me when he first heard about it that he definitely didn't want to go and see it, like under no circumstances, because he has a memory of uh, seeing Dachau in, uh, in München. And it was severely traumatic for him. So today we were looking at the list of things that we haven't seen here in, uh, in Nish and uh, it came up again and he said, I know you really want to see this and I said, I think we should go and pay our respects to those who perished and he agreed to come with me. Now of course he can run away at any time and go for a cup of coffee if he really, you know, box at the idea. I will understand it's not a must do thing for people and I actually really appreciate that he feels really that strongly about it as well because uh, lots of people, there are, not lots of people, but there are people that even say that none of it happened. So we're going to pay our respects and uh, enjoy another beautiful day. It is warm weather again, like it is like spring. Um, yeah, yesterday evening we decided uh, just on no dinner because we had this wonderful roast lamb yesterday for lunch and it was actually really we just chilled for the evening. We didn't do much and uh, I did a bit of editing and that was it. Um, yeah, I'm going to, uh, going to miss the company really when, when Marcel leaves tomorrow. But it's been very good. Uh, it's been very nice having him here and now we have to go do our little walk to get there. It's about, uh, it's right next to the bus station so we know where it is and uh, yeah, we're going to cool. find our cool. way there and uh, we'll see you there.
And that was our visit to the Red Cross concentration camp. Um, of course, by far not as big as the concentration camp um, that I saw um, at Mauthausen. Something like this, this camp had like four types of categories of, of uh, um, inmates people that were held hostage, that for one soldier they could kill 50 hostages, or 50 to 100 hostages. Uh, Jewish uh, in, inmates who were worked to death, and same as in Mauthausen, they did not like wasting bullets on them, so they would work them to death. They would make them do, like, pointless work. Uh, then there were prisoners who were uh, where they thought they might be involved with the resistance and then there were the POWs who also were maltreated like very 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 badly uh, most of the POW there's the train <laughs> most of the POW uh, prisoners were moved to Norway and this is something we just realized we grew up with lots of stories of the Second World War, like I, I've said this before, my father was a child during the Second World War. I did not know that there were like Serbian prisoners moved to Norway. I'm not even sure I knew that there were concentration camps in Norway, but there were, and they were moved there, and some of them survived. A lot of the uh, Jewish uh, in term, uh, uh, inmates, they were either they either died here or they were sent to Mauthausen, Gusen, where I visited uh, when I was in Austria, uh, but also, of course, Auschwitz and uh, and Dachau uh, were the main the main camps, I believe, where they were moved to, and the rest were used for you know there was there was an uprising here. Uh, they tried to escape on the 12th of February of 1942. Uh, there was an uprising and, and a, an attempt to escape, which was uh, was it was partially uh, successful. There was a second attempt, and of course, like as the Nazis did, they came down very, very hard on them, and anybody who was involved was shot afterwards. Uh, now, what I learned in Mauthausen already was that the Germans did not like using ammunition on uh, on inmates because then they would have to declare it as a death of war. If you worked, worked the inmates to death, then it was a casualty. It wasn't it wasn't like an, uh, a war casualty. It was just a death. And that seemed to have been uh, the rule here as well. Very, very, uh, the Dutch word is schrijnend, the very hard, um, hard part was the third floor. They had a lot, about 24 cells, I think, or 32 cells of where inmates were kept in solitary confinement. Most of these cells had uh, like a, a pipe, which had a type of window where air would come through. Um, and that was then the only contact that they had to the outside world. And then there were two cells where there was no light at all. And they derived enormous pleasure from keeping people there. Uh, we need to go process this now. It is always very, very hard to see, but I do really believe that it's important to go and see those places, to go and pay your respects to those who lost their lives for us to have better lives today. And may it never, ever happen again. I think it's time for coffee. Oh.
for sun. I love my native land. So we went for dinner and we had two bottles of wine because we're going to say goodbye to each other tomorrow morning and we've been talking about and uh, yeah before I get all emotional <laughs> this was uh, day 305 from here to Jerusalem I don't know. I don't know. Should I cry? Should I smile? Should I, should I do any of these things? Who knows? Who knows what's right? Who knows what's wrong? Tomorrow is another day. Good night. <laughs>